Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So namaskar learners welcome to this first session on human behavior I am live here to answer your questions and to take up suggestions and feedbacks from you regarding this course so all those people who are with us i would request you to put forward your questions <coughs> suggestions feedbacks either in the youtube feed which is running with this course session or through the chat link on uh, this team meeting in case you are not able to join me today and you still have questions what you could do is <clears throat> post these questions either in the forum or you could send in an email to me with a question and depending on the availability of time that i have i will be answering your questions so then let's get started and all those people who are linked with me i request you to start putting up your questions and i'll try to answer these questions with whatever knowledge i have about this subject area so uh uh other than good afternoon so i don't have a question as such uh, and the first question is from uh, g joshi and uh, mr joshi has a question saying that where can i use this course in my career depending on what career path you have you can have this application of course human behavior course was designed to help people understand the basics of behavior as such the course addresses questions related to why people do what they do how to understand behavior in general and other aspects of human behavior like how do people decide what is memory and why it is not a problem to forget things so the course basically introduces people to themselves now depending on what career path you have or where you work you can use this course either to have a better social understanding of people around you or to understand your work environment or to understand how to cope and deal with work related problems or better understanding your family so there are many applications you have to find out where you can apply the knowledge from this course so i hope uh, that answer your question ms joshi and ankit verma has a question related to whether they can change the course date so i'm not aware of the fact that we can actually change the course date because this is uh, decided by uh, the central command office at uh, iit madras and they decide the date but i would suggest you to write to them and see if it works punam has a question saying that what is the type of question which is coming in the exam so mostly 
you would have multiple choice questions similar to what is given to your assignment. And if you do your assignments properly and watch the videos and read a book which has been suggested in the course, you would be doing great with this course. So one hour a day would be sufficient for you to do wonders, but even few hours a week, you would score very good. So type of question then are multiple choice. So Ankit Verma, as I said, uh, if you try to flood the same question again and again, my answers won't change. You have to contact IIT Madras in command office and maybe they'll help you with this. The final exam scenario would require you to visit our exam partners, TCS, and they will take your exams online Exam questions would be multiple choice questions. And there's a date fixed for these exams, so you have to download your admit card, visit the exam center and finish your exam. That is the uh, probable scenario of the exam. Shukesh Kumar has a question. Is this uh, this course is only for postgraduate level or you can purchase it at undergraduate level also? Uh, I think there is no purchase option here, but uh, yes, this course is basically designed for undergraduate level. Although it can be very well used for postgraduates also. And since this is an introductory course on human behavior, it is an under, undergraduate level course. But an understanding this course will give you insights into the human aspect and building on to that, you can further take courses at the postgraduate level. So all those people who are wishing me a good afternoon, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, the structure of the final exam, Mr. Joshi is again. Multiple choice questions. One answer is correct and you have to find that answer. Good afternoon again to all those people who are joining me right now. So Lakshmi has a question. Do assignment questions help in the main exam? Yes, it, they do. Doing the assignment questions train you into understanding the subject matter of this course. And once you are clear with the subject matter, you will be able to solve final exam questions in a more efficient way. So yes, assignment questions are helpful that way. Another reason for completing the assignment is that some marks are also added from assignment questions. So if you complete the assignments, a part of your final score comes also from the assignment score. So another reason for you to complete the assignments. OK, so. Anju uh, has a question, DAVV second year exam. 
Anjali, I'm sorry, I don't know when this exam would be conducted. Thank you, Mr. Joshi. It's nice to hear good words about teaching. So Ankit, one thing you can learn from this course is that putting something repeatedly is not going to be effective. So one way of effectively putting your question forward or your point forward is not using repetitions because when you use repetitions after a while people ignore you so one good method of making yourself effective is using effective words the choice of words reframe your question put it once with effective words and you'll be more effective also you can use words in such a way that people are bound to reply to you. That is more effective than repetition because what happens is there is something called the adaptation property of the brain. And through this adaptation property, the brain ignores redundant information or repetitive information. So if you want to be effective, you have to use more concise and clear words, effective words, and this is one practical application of this course. Thank you, Anjali. How many number of MCQs are there? In the final exam, there will be 50 MCQs. Each MCQ would have two marks, which amounts to 50 into two, giving you 100. Paromita has a question. Sir, could you please suggest some good Indian international journals in this particular field? Uh, in psychology, there are a number of journals, Paromita. So you could, uh, depending on which area you're working, you can select a journal. For example, if you're working in cognition, there is a journal of cognition. There is a, a journal of uh, applied cognition. Of course, the American Psychological Association publishes journals like Psychological Bulletin and Psychological Research and Psychological Review. At Indian level, you have journals like uh, Psychological Studies, and uh, there is a journal which is coming out from uh, the Applied Psychology uh, field, which is called the Indian Journal of Applied Psychology, uh, if I'm not uh, wrong. So there are a number of journals. Uh, you need to first specify which area of psychology you are working in. And then maybe I can point out some good journals for you. No, Jyoti Rekha. Uh, zero assignment is not mandatory. Zero assignment was just for you to get familiar with this course. Zero assignment was sort of a test for you to assess where you are in terms of understanding human behavior before starting this course. So it is it is kind of a uh, a self evaluation. Suresh Kumar, I'm a BTEC student. Can I register in this course? Sure, Suresh. A number of BTEC students from my institute have registered for this course. So why not you? Uh, Kartik has a question. What is the number of questions and time duration of the exam? The number of questions is going to be 50. The time duration is going to be three hours. The questions are multiple choice. So, uh, Promita, you have a question, uh, and your area is language studies, dyslexia, and reading. Okay, great. So, uh, you want to publish in the area of language. Uh, I think there is a 
good journal on uh, cognitive linguistics. So you can look at that. You can also uh, look at the journal of uh, uh, cognitive psychology. You can look at uh, advanced, uh, apply, I'm sorry, applied cognitive psychology, journal of applied cognitive psychology. There are a number of journals. I'll tell you what. Uh, there is a website called sciencedirect.com or you can go to uh, PubMed NCBH which is uh, the website for uh, national health uh, in, in the US, NHS, and uh, there you will find a list of journals. Also, you can visit uh, vendors like Springer or uh, Wiley, and they will provide you a list of journals which are available in psychology. But uh, if you're looking for very uh, specific journals in India. I think University of Hyderabad publishes a, a journal on on uh, linguistics. So probably you can they have a center for linguistics or a center for cognition and uh, one of my friends work there. So I think they have a journal. You, if you're looking for an Indian journal, you can probably publish there. Uh, does this score help you? HR professionals? Yes, it does HR help HR professional Harish. Um, HR professionals are all about human relations. It is about talking to humans and how to look at uh, human resources. So I, I'd say it is uh, it will be more than effective for HR professionals by learning how people behave and uh, how you should uh, take assessment of certain situations. Uh, it, this course should be a great help to HR professionals. So brain in language area, as I said, uh, there is a lot. There are a lot of journals. Uh, one journal I just mentioned, uh, which is coming out of Hyderabad. Uh, other you can also look for publishing in psychological studies. Uh, there are journals specifically dedicated to uh, brain and language studies. So depending on what work you are doing, uh, that area will define the kind of journal that you are looking for now given you a couple of pointers as to where to go and find it either you can go to uh, the publisher website and they have a number of journals listed or probably you can uh, look at uh, these databases which is science direct or epsco or probably you can look at american psychological association and they have a list of journals where they publish uh, research related to your field <laughs> So uh, if Anu has a question saying that how many marks are important to pass? I think it should be 30 percent. Uh, that that should be the limit. I'm not sure, but it is 30 percent. So 30 percent marks out of which some marks will come from assignment. So uh, that should be enough. Aren't you uh, assignment zero is not mandatory. The exams would be of 100 marks, 50 questions into two. Harish, thank you. Mr. Joshi. Yes, it could be Mr. Joshi. The course can be applicable to uh, digital marketing and marketing. It teaches you see. Anywhere where you interact with humans, this course will be uh, uh, helpful and all around you are human beings. So the wider net is probably every branch. Which deals with human interactions. This course will be helpful. Wherever a human comes in, whether he is interacting with a non uh, living thing like a, a system or if he is interacting with another human. This course is going to be helpful because what this course teaches you is what is the basis of human behavior? Who we are, what we do, why we do what we do, and how to make things better for us by understanding uh, the reasons and attributing the causes of our behavior. So anywhere with humans, this course is going to be effective.
Sir, he has a question. Sir, I bought all the three books that suggested in the website. One book is very familiar to the course. Remaining books are not familiar to the course. <laughs> so, uh, sir, we are, what would happen is uh, that some of the books I have extensively used in designing the course, but you would see that there is a point after which I switch books. The simple reason is that no book is perfect. So when we teach, when we design course, we look at a number of books. There are times when you find that certain topics in the course is not available in any book. This is because over the years of teaching, I borrow certain concepts from research papers. My job is to read these research papers and make it easier for you to understand. Right? And that is why a number of books are prescribed. I mean, you read a number of books. They are written with a different viewpoint and they are written in different ways. So if you read uh, them, if you read all of them, it is very good. But if you read any of them, it will give you a base to this course. So as you said, so one of these books uh, would be uh, covering most of what has been taught, but some of them uh, will not cover all of it. They'll cover some parts of it. So what happened in designing this course is that some points I took from some book and for some points I took from some other book. And there are things that is not available in any of these books. This comes from certain research papers. So yes, just reading one book. And if you find that if you bought all the three books that it is good for you, you can read all three of them and then have a much better understanding of the course. Right? And it's very good to hear that people are actually buying books because nowadays people don't buy books. So if, you, if you're buying books and reading, uh, I, I think you're doing a commendable job. Great, so that brings me to the end of uh, the number of questions that I'm having for today. On this YouTube platform, let me check if I have other questions on other platform. Now, for all those people who are with me today, what I'll suggest is ask your questions related to the course or something which is in your mind which you wish to ask and you think I'll be able to answer. So uh, please ask those questions. I'm here for the next 30 minutes. So uh, ask your questions. Let's talk. Whatever you feel that you, you didn't understand or if you have in your mind certain things which you want to discuss, then uh, I will be happy to answer those questions for you. So uh, all those people who are there, who are connected with me today, go ahead and ask your questions. I'm still here for the next 30 minutes or so. So take this time and uh, if for some reason you don't get a chance to ask a question now, as I said, there are other ways of reaching me. You can post this question onto the forum. So we do weekly checks with the forum and I try to answer those questions. If in the forum itself you don't find answers which satisfy you, then there is an email that I have. Go to my web page, write an email to me, and I'll answer your questions directly. But then if you're writing a question directly to me, uh, provide me some time because I'm uh, most of the time I'm engaged with something or the other. So I'll take some time and I'll answer your questions. Or there is going to be another session in uh, the near future. Maybe you can join then and ask whatever questions you have. So just watch the videos and uh, read books either purchase them if you cannot then there is a lot of internet sources from where you can uh, probably look at online books so go through those do the assignments properly and uh, by doing all of this you will ensure a uh, good marks and the final exam but the uh, best reward that you're going to get is not the final marks of the certificate. What you're going to get is 
knowledge about human beings. It is interesting. Why? Because we are humans and we interact with humans most of the time. So our knowledge of how humans interact and what are those points which we should keep in mind while making these interactions or social exchange as we call them, how to make our life better and uh, uh, get more gains out of interact people interaction. So all those things you can learn by uh, going through this course. Right, so uh, Pramita has another question. So could you please highlight on some of the very latest research areas human psychology and language cognition, psycholinguistics. Uh, so, <clears throat> language cognition, Pramita, I'm not uh, very familiar. My area is not language, although I have a course on uh, psychology of language. Neither psycholinguistics is my area, uh, but there are uh, certain uh, new things. So, since it is not my primary area, I don't... Uh, uh, sort of read very recent trends, but if you have a specific question in mind or if you wish to discuss a specific question, then maybe you can uh, write an email and then we can discuss it over an email. Uh, give me some time to read about it, about uh, human psychology. Uh, recent trends would be in terms of how memory is redefined. I was reading a very recent paper in which the organization of memory has been uh, challenged and so these authors what they did was uh, this is in trends in cognitive uh, sciences and so this paper uh, sort of challenges the way uh, memory organization has been thought of before in terms of uh, how deeper meaning and surface meaning leads to memory which is basically comparing the idea about modal model of memory and uh, Craig and Lockhart's idea of memory or the organization of memory in terms of uh, the branch structure in STM. So those ideas have been changed and this whole organization of memory thing has been challenged. So that is one recent area. Another recent area is uh, in terms of spatial navigation, how people navigate in space. And so uh, some important questions uh, that I was very recently uh, seeing is in terms of how the place cells in the hippocampus uh, they they respond to uh, this different kinds of navigation. So there is a lot of area and there is a, a lot of uh, recent questions which are looked into. Since I am concerned more with memory and attention, I look at research related to this field. If you want to know what we are doing presently in our lab, a student of mine is looking at something called working memory update. So updating a working memory and how does that help in reading comprehension so uh, for both older people and uh, 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 people who are uh, in in the school so younger people so that kind of a question another student is uh, looking at something called how prospective me memory failures work so uh, what kind of uh, prospective memory failures um, exist and how that can be handled that is another question that another student is looking at. So there are different questions that people in my lab is looking or for uh, myself, I'm looking at uh, these uh, different hippocampal region and how they help in navigation. So there are different things that we're looking at. So you have to be very specific if you, if, if you want to discuss a particular area uh, related to language psychology and uh, psycholinguistics is that's not my primary area. So uh, I don't look at that, but still, as I said, if you are interested in discussing uh, a certain point or a certain issue in this uh, uh, area, please feel free to write to me and then maybe uh, give me some time. I'll read and then maybe, uh, maybe we can discuss. Maybe is not getting so Harish is the question. Different types of maybe is not getting attention due to social media. We are going. Uh, human behavior is going bad these days, like uh, to know your views. Thank you. Uh, so different types of human behavior is now getting attention due to social media. Is human behavior going bad? Now, uh, Harish, you have to be very specific. What kind of behavior that you are 
uh, describing through the social media. Of course, the overuse of social media is a problem. Uh, pe people have bought certain kind of actions which should be private into the public. And that is the bad, probably, I, I think that is what uh, you are referring to. So no behavior is bad. Every behavior has a time and a place. And if you perform a behavior out of context, it turns out to be bad, right? So, uh, of course, certain actions are bad and, and uh, there is no doubt about it, but there is a philosophy behind what is being bad and what is being good. My take here is that the use of social media should be limited. The more you uh, get involved in this idea of social media, because what is happening is people are being more uh, exhibitionist. They are trying to put their personal things onto exhibition. And when you do that, you stand a chance of being uh, evaluated by people who have no relation to what you're doing. Also, uh, certain behaviors or certain actions uh, that, that you do on the behavior uh, on, on the social media, they are misread by people and then they comment on you. And, and then it, it creates a problem on its own. So what my suggestions would be there should be limited use of social media. It's good that social media is there, but there, there should be limited use. And if you don't require it, it's better to avoid social media. That is what my suggestion is. Uh, but still, if you, if you if you want to have this social media kind of a thing, you should, but you should be very limited. Not everything should be put there. Every behavior, as I described, has a time and a place uh, to be performed. And if you do that, then those problems would not arise. Okay. Anjana has a question, sir. Can we expect an advanced level of this course in coming days? Uh, maybe uh, we can think about an, an uh, advanced human behavior course, uh, but this advanced behavior course would uh, be focusing on only certain areas because when you're talking advanced, we'll take certain areas and uh, maybe uh, think about developing those areas. For example, we can think about a course on memory and attention or memory and language and then just focus on those two areas. So uh, maybe in future, right now, uh, I have very limited time available, but if I get time in future, I'll think of an advanced level course. Uh, Sangeeta has a question, sir. Classroom is too long, going for one hour. It will be better if it is for half an hour. Uh, no, Sangeeta, there is a very good trick to it. The lectures have to be completed within one hour. We have this slot. What you could do is you can uh, view a lecture for half an hour, break it off, and then go. Do whatever you wish to do and come back the next day and continue from where you have left in the first day. So you yourself can break a one hour lecture into several parts and view it. There is no compulsion as such to watch the whole video. For our purpose, since we are in the flow, we complete a topic or we complete a section in one hour. Sometimes it is more than one hour also and we have to reduce it. But this is for the purpose of teaching. As a learner, give enough time, give enough space in training for you to uh, get acquainted with these concepts since these are concepts are new to you. So one thing which you can probably do is break your lectures into several parts. Take 20 minutes of lecture every day and then uh, go do something else and then come back again and then continue. If you do it this way, two things are going to happen. First, you'll get enough time to mentally review what you have done in the last class and also after viewing a 20 minute lecture you will get enough time to think what the lecture proposes or what the lecture says that way you will have a wonderful time learning mr has a question and what is the question in a busy schedule if we read just assignment questions can we pass the exam yes by just uh, doing the assignments you will get the minimum mark so you can uh, pass the exam. But uh, my suggestion uh, would be that few hours, maybe two hours a week. I think most people can uh, spend two hours.